but there's a few other systems that have revealed themselves to be really intimately involved in the immune system and I think are gonna make you think about the immune system just differently. So the first one I wanna talk about is your brain. So if you did not have an immune system, and I don't know if you're gonna remember this talk in general, but if you did not, you definitely would not rem remember this. Um, and the reason is that in your brain, uh, your, each of your neurons forms someone on the order of a thousand different connections to other neurons, and that forms the circuitry of memory. If you want to form a really good memory, it turns out that two things have to happen. One is that one of those, those synapses gets stronger as a result of the experience you have, but other of the synapses actually have to slowly degrade. So you, you reinforce some circuitry. Imagine you make all the circuitry when you're just born and some of it's just not even really used, but then you start to reinforce certain connections and other ones have to degrade. Those are two obligate forms of, of, of how you form memory. The degradation is done by the immune system. So the reinforcement, you know, the neurons find each other and they touch each other and they make better connections as you form memory. But the, the, the pruning is done by macrophages. So the immune systems I was telling you about that see bacteria, they also have pattern recognitions on, the, on, on their surface that see your own cells and help prune you, right? So your brain all the time is being pruned. You know, little things are going on as, you're, as, you're, as your immune system is going along and clipping wires that don't need to be connected anymore. And that's how you form memory. So, so that, we didn't know that 10 years ago. You know, if, if, I, if I told you that 10 years ago, people would be like, ah, no, that can't be true. Your immune system's not involved. But it's really clear now that the immune system is doing that. And the other side of that is that Alzheimer's is a disease now that's very much understood. The same cells that do the clipping cease to do the clipping. So as you get older, for reasons we don't understand, the, these cells are called microglia cells and they're uh, macrophages of the brain. They cease to do that effectively. They start to accumulate in large numbers, but they don't really clear the material in your brain. And that's really it seems to be the number one indicator of some of the forms of de dementia, including Alzheimer's. Again, so this is a case where your immune system is not what you thought it was. It's not just a system that de defends you. It's a system that prunes you. And it, it can prune foreign things extensively, like killing them. But you, it does it more gently. Another example of that, by the way, I was mentioning the mammary, um, you know, the fact that in the mammary, the, uh, the, your um, mammary ducts branch. Well, when women uh, go to, be, to, to lactate, that branching becomes more extensive. That's the development of, of lactation. Um, and that branching is achieved by the immune system helping the branches form. And it prunes them and makes the branches what they are. So again, it's a, it's a function of your immune system that's not about defense. It's about making your organs work well, okay? So neurodegeneration in the brain is a really, I think is, a, is one that just points to this idea that you didn't really understand what the immune system was about before. You thought it was all about defense. But, but, but one way to think about this is, is if you go back, like think back, I think it's about a billion years. You probably won't remember, I don't either. But the um, <laughs> cells, cells were in a, in, a, in a big, you know, you had individual protists that were in, in, a, in a stew, we think. And then all of a sudden we started to have multicellular organisms like our own. Well, what had to happen at that point? Well, on the one hand, you had to make sure that things, something wasn't eating you. So that's the immune system that we kind of understood. You gotta make sure you defend yourself. But you also gotta make sure that you can get along. And so you, the, the junctions you want to be, to have to make a tissue work, it seems like the immune system may have evolved at that point, not only to defend you, but also to take parts that weren't quite synonymous and make them work together. Another really classic one that I want to point out just in the, in the passing is arteriosclerosis. So in a particularly our parents' time, the idea of, of, of plaques depositing in your blood vessels was all about diet. And so you were told not to eat certain lipids, and that's still true. Diet does have a big effect on it. But if you look very carefully at, or you don't have to look that carefully at, at arteriosclerotic plaques, underneath them are angry macrophages. So the plaque deposition is in part because the immune system that's normally meant to help you with um, metabolism, how to deal with lipids in your body, have actually gotten upset. And we're not exactly sure why they do that and why they do that more with age, but it's clear that arteriosclerotic plaques are, are immune foci. Underneath that, all that lipid deposition that gums up your vessels is an immune reaction. And it's immune reaction because presumably the immune system normally, well, we know the immune system normally is involved in helping you to digest some of the non-digestibles in your body, and uh, including lipid metabolism. So again, it's a case where you kind of didn't really necessarily understand you know, what your immune system was all about until we start to see it showing up everywhere. Cancers I've mentioned, 
type, uh, obviously things like autoimmunities, but the one that's really, I think, very popular and very obvious, and I mentioned it already a little bit, is the idea that in your gut, you have 10 times more bacteria than you have in the whole rest of cells in the rest of your body, and you need to figure out which of those are commensals and which one might be pathogens. So commensals mean you need to actually make an immune response and recognize that that bug is a good one, and figure out how to accommodate it, and then if another one comes in that's trying to break through the barrier and eat your gut from the inside, you gotta defend, right? So that distinction represents, you gotta know that one, you gotta call one of those kind of self. You gotta make a, you gotta recognize its peptides and you gotta make B cells against it, but instead of destroying it, you just wanna quarantine it. You wanna keep it, as long as it's in the gut, it's good. If it starts to come into you and get into your bloodstream, it's bad. So you need to quarantine, you need to also kind of categorize the world at large, and it's not just about blowing everything away.